What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are here again for another episode review of Power Ghost um, Book 2. Listen, this season... Two episode ten, the season finale, and what is it called? It's called Love and War. Okay, no Tamar. Um, baby, first of all, the episode is long as shit, so the review might be long. So y'all just buckle up, all right? Because we in for a ride. So the episode starts off. You got Monet and um Dante. They on the yacht. Okay, I said, oh y'all already left the country or whatever. No, bitch, we just on the yacht. You know what I'm saying? Um, she said, listen. Lorenzo thought he had me down. My other nigga right here that I was truly supposed to be with, he gonna take care of me, okay? And, you know, at this point, you know, she's really here for that plan about getting him out the country or whatever. Dante was like, you know, I know what I said, this whole thing about taking Lorenzo out or whatever, but, you know, maybe we need to slow down on that for right now because Lorenzo, he ain't that type of dude that, you know, you just take out and everything be all good, okay? We got to plan this out a little bit more better, all right? And it's just going to look a little bit more suspicious if, like, one of us do it, okay? And so, at this point, you know, she was trying to tell him, like, why you trying to back the fuck down? He was like, that ain't it. You know, we got to plan it a little bit better. It's going to happen, but I think we should get Kane to do it. I said, what in the raising Kane is going on? I said, come on, Raquel. This what you finna do? You finna do? Monet and Raquel the same people at this point, okay? Because I said, what? She was like, yeah, we'll get Kane to do it. I said, huh? Now, listen, this is not Kanan, and this is not Tariq. Kanan is not about to take his daddy out, okay? Meanwhile, speaking of Tariq, he in the room, and uh, little Effie ass still up in the bed. She He on the phone calling uh, Lauren. Hello, this is Lauren Baldwin. I am not here. Can you leave a message? I said, no, she not here for real, for real. I said, Lauren lost her life for nothing if she lost her life, okay? You know, we're just going to assume at this point that she did. Bitch, you know, she, Effie going to wake up and say, who that is? If you calling another bitch, that's okay. Like, you know, you ain't got to do all that. I said, you know what, girl? Go back to sleep. Because you did all of that. And then you came and got back up in that man's bed after you done took his bitch. Okay? You know? And and I was just like, all right. Meanwhile, this whole little conversation with Effie made me mad with Tariq. Because, you know, he gets into this whole state of, you know, if I... You know, he couldn't get in contact with Lauren. And she like, maybe because she off the grid, she ain't got a phone on. That's why, because she off the grid. Of course. I said, duh, duh, duh. We're in the street life, okay? You you turn your phones off. Just like Tasha, she in witness protection. She ain't got the phone. I said, why they have Tariq acting so dumb? You are in the street life. You are, you know, you didn't learn from your father or whatever. I mean, you emulating the motherfucker even though you can't stand him. You emulating him so much, all right? But yet you sitting up here telling this girl Effie that you trust her. Outside of your mama, she the only person that you can trust and you want her, if you go down to jail, to go find Yas because the adoption is almost uh, uh, finalized. I want you to go get her because you're the only one that I trust. I said, what? We don't trust motherfuckers up in the street, gang. Okay? You shouldn't even trust Brayden. I said, this is the guy. I said, child, bitch, I ain't slang shit. I ain't picked up shit. But I know enough. Okay? I know that we ain't supposed to do that. Meanwhile, you know, he's going to get ready for court. And this is when Davis and them finally tell him that, you know, Trace is the witness that's supposed to get on the stand. And at this point, he feeling some type of way because if um, Trace get up there and say something about Kane, you know, uh, Kane will feel like it was uh, 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 Tariq that put him up to it. And so they got to figure that whole situation out, um, <clears throat> you know, and somehow, you know, they bring up this whole situation with Riley. Sax little uh cousin Nate niece or whatever the fuck she was, you know, in that whole situation that went down or whatever. Sax don't want to bring her into the fro And I said you should have never put her into play in the first place, cause now it's a possibility that you might have to bring that bitch in as a witness too. Okay? So at this point, you know, Tariq wanna know how long he knew this, all right. But Davis totally, totally bypassed that question and kept on going to the courtroom. And I was like, oh, all right. Meanwhile, with Dante, Dante kicking it with um, <laughs> Zeke. Did y'all see the video? I know y'all saw the video. I know y'all saw the video because y'all kept on DMing me the video as if I didn't see the video. Oh, my God. 
Y'all, if it's on the shave room and if it's stuff that I reviewed, child, I didn't seen it before. Y'all seen it, okay? Y'all ain't got to keep sending it to my DM like it's important, okay? But no, girl, that video of Zeke and the cast at, at the uh, club, and he was dancing. I said, oh, so he really do be acting like Zeke. Like, who, he, there is no difference between the real person and Zeke, okay? And then the one video, I felt so damn bad because I didn't know if it was real or not. You know, because some people just make up stuff just to make up stuff. They said that he told them, told the DJ to play his music and one nobody vibing to it but him. And it was ass. <laughs> I said, Zeke. Ain't no hole in your blood, but I ain't never hear that song, okay? Cut it out. Cut it out, sir. But anyway, Dante up there kicking it with him, taking him to this hangar where he got all his cars. He was like, oh, my God. You got all these cars? All these cars yours? And you got the plane? You got the plane that's yours, too? I said he in the hangar, okay? Obviously, this is his or whatever. And so... Basically, he's just trying to make sure that he's going to go ahead and come with them. All right. He was like, listen, um, you want me to come with y'all? You want me to trust y'all? I don't fuck with Monet. And, and, and the fact that you saying that I could trust Monet because you trust, that, that makes me feel some type of way, okay? Because I don't trust that bitch, you know? He was like, hold up, hold up. First of all, what is there for you here in New York? You done dropped out of Sandsfield. You can't get on the uh, uh, basketball team just yet because of all the shit that went down. So what else is here? Plus, your mama love you more than anything in this world. So what are you talking about? And then to tighten it up, to give him, you know, sweeten it up a little bit and soften up the blow to make him uh, uh, want to come over to his side. He gave him the keys to one of the cars. He go, Z. Oh, that's for me? I said, he giving you the keys, bruh. He giving you the keys. Yes, it's for you. It's not for the invisible man behind you. Jesus Christ, Zeke. But anyway, then we get to Monet and um, K. Girl, they out in the public on a bridge or something. And Monet basically telling him, listen, you're going to have to take Lorenzo out. Take Lorenzo out. He got my, I got his name. You want me to take him out? Like, what, what the hell is going on? Bitch, I'm sitting here like... The way Monet said that shit with a straight face, she was like, your daddy fucking tried to kill me, okay? He shot at me, and you gonna let that happen? All right, you gonna let that happen? And then I gotta have, I gotta get Tariq in on this shit? Oh, you still fucking with that nigga? That nigga killed his own daddy. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me he killed his daddy? Yeah, he killed his daddy. All right, back then, I do it. I said, so it took for her mentioning Tariq to get him to say, yeah, I killed my daddy. You know, because it's like a weird competition that he got with Tariq, okay? Monet don't give a damn about Tariq. Tariq is making her money, uh, but other than that, that that ain't no familiar ties. Ain't no it don't go deeper than money, okay? And, and I want Kane to understand that. And, 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 and I just was like, girl, Kane, your mama just manipulated you into killing your daddy. You gonna do it? You know, because she was just like, he the one that got your ass beat up up in the um in the prison with, by them guards. He didn't get he drew the freaking uh the rings of the uh uh uh, uh, uh the empire or whatever, and you got his name, okay? You know what I'm saying? She she listed all other lists. And all other fuck shit that Lorenzo did to him to get him incentives to want to go ahead and to beat his ass and to kill him. I said, Monet, you are mother of the year, bitch. Mother of the goddamn year. I said, wow, this is crazy. Meanwhile, it's time for court, right? It's time for court. Okay, so, you know, they letting the evidence come through. Remember, they had to go to the back and talk about this little witness or whatever. So, they letting it come through. Next thing you know, they talking about that Trace was supposed to be up there and he's supposed to be on the witness stand. But yet, he got sick mysteriously. Remember when Sullivan came up there to uh, Braden last week and told him, you know what, you need to take the, um, you need to tell Trace not to do it and you do it or whatever, okay, because it's going to be bad for Trace or whatever. Kane going to come after him and all this stuff and woo-woo-woo. And so, of course, Braden took it, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, oh, my God, me and uh, uh, Tariq looking at him like, damn, this motherfucker finna snitch. And I'm sitting here like, see, this is what I'm talking about. You don't trust nobody. Bitch, Brayden proved that's the fuck wrong. I said, oh, shit. Brayden came through. I said, come through, white boy. 
Oh, snit. Okay, you got a little bit of my respect, okay? You got a little bit of my respect. He said, ain't no whore in my blood. I said, all right, you took that shit to fucking heart, bitch. He said, ain't no snitching up in here. You know what I'm saying? I said, what's good? He was like, yeah, what's good, Miss Lady? She said, so do you know this person? He was like, yeah, I know him from Choke or whatever. He my roommate up in Stansfield. You know what I'm saying? He got kicked out because, you know, they said some people was up there Choke selling some drugs or whatever. Oh, and they selling drugs up at Sandsfield. He was like, yeah, but see, he my roommate, and that's how I know that he didn't kill Reynolds, nor did he kill Ramirez. I said, wait a minute. Now, how you going to swing this? He was like, listen, first of all, I know that he didn't do it because I was the one that was selling the drugs on the campus. His whole daddy went like this. Oh, my God. You know, in white aspiration and white side like, oh, my God. White gasp. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Y'all said what? Or oh, I should say wealthy gas, okay? And um, we just sitting here like, bitch, wait a minute. He said, yes, I did. He was like, well, how you got proof? And he said, yeah, it's through this thing called Course Correct. I made it. I made up the business or whatever through Simon Stern and all this stuff. Listen, look at this, okay? He had the paper. He had the proof. He had the evidence. And Davis was like, mistrial this shit and let's get the fuck up out of here. Judge, judge, I don't think we could do that. Like, come on, we need some more time and I can get some more. And the judge was like, girl, ain't nobody got time for that, Miss Sullivan. Sex even says something in agreement too and Sullivan was looking at him like are you serious when you just asked me if we can to make this thing a relationship and you gonna throw me under the bus like that too I said it's business sweetheart it's business sweetheart that's all that it is don't take it personal ma all right and so the judge was like yeah this is a mistrial because they was like you ain't gonna buy by this jury look at the jury the jury was over there like girl do you see this shit like this bitch really got us up in here all this stuff and then it's all done yeah, bitch, look at this. You know, they were just doing all of that goddamn whispering and shit. And so at this point, I was like, you know what? It's over. It's done. It's a mistrial. You good. They took that ankle bracelet off of, um, <clears throat> they took it off of Tariq. And they said, you can go on home, boo-boo. You know, of course, the Weston dude, his daddy, Braden daddy is in his feelings and pissed off at him or whatever. You know, and Sax had the nerve to try to talk to Sullivan. I said, don't even do it. Meanwhile, Tariq is up there in David's office. And he kind of put him on blast, okay? He was like, you're a free man or whatever. He said, but listen, I know that for right now, but I'm finna go try to get my sister back. That's what I need to do. He was like, and then he said he gonna be out the game as soon as he get the sister back. David's like, well, I mean, what you really should do is, you know, look toward the future, finish up in Stansfield, get us a few more years, and then get your sister back, okay? And he was like, listen, because that's what your father would have did. He said, I ain't that fuck nigga. I said, ooh. You know, <laughs> the tension between Ghost and <laughs> Tariq still at this time, and Ghost is dead dead, okay? Courtney Kim said Ghost is dead, so y'all can stop playing, okay? The nigga's not coming back, you know? Um, I said, wait a minute. You know, he said, I ain't that motherfucking nigga, all right? Fuck that nigga. I'm trying to get my dude back, uh, my, my, my sister back or whatever. And what you need to do is you need to give me back a refund on this shit because you didn't get me off. It was Brady who got me off. Plus, you was up in this bitch double dipping because you got paid from Kane too, okay? He was like... I don't give a fuck. You can take that to the goddamn boys, and they're going to have to prove that. And if they prove that, you know, um, can't have anything to do with this, that means that you're going to have something to do with it. Then the shit going to come all right back around on your ass. So you want to do that again? Okay, I do what the fuck I got to do. I said, oops. <laughs> David said, you won't pull one on me, okay? At this boy, my ass, you know? And so at that point, Tariq said, whatever, nigga. He walked up out of there, uh, and David's called Kane. I said, oh, Lord. This is a mess. So then you got Sax and um Sullivan. Well, Sax was sitting at the bar. Sullivan comes up. She's all distraught because, oh, it's been confirmed that Lauren is dead. They was like, oh, my God, bitch, how she died? You know, she was literally gunned down. She was like, no, nah, she was ran over by a guy. I said, what the fuck? I said, Effie. Now, see, I don't know if I would have rather her get a bullet to the hell or to get run down. Like, she literally had this girl running for her life. Okay, they said they found her body in the car and all that stuff. I said, what? Effie. Wow, girl, that's cold-blooded, okay? And she was like, you know, Sullivan feeling so guilty about this whole thing because, you know, she said, um... You know, she the one that got this girl into this whole situation and Carrie too. And she, Carrie was going to, um, you know, testify and do all this stuff. And then Carrie wind up conveniently committing suicide or whatever. And at this point, um, 
you know, even Zeke had asked Dante, do you really think that she did that to herself? And Monet didn't have anything to do with it. And he was like, no, I believe Monet, okay? And at this point, I don't believe it. I don't know. I just don't know because to me, physically, how did Monet get old girl up there unless she put a gun to Carrie and told her to get up there and do it herself? Okay, that's how I feel that happened. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know, Sullivan feeling guilty about it. And then she want to point the blame all on Tariq or whatever and saying that he probably was the one who did all of this stuff. And they was like, you know, Sax said, you know what? Um, I don't think so because, you know, he had an ankle monitor on. His ankle monitor never went off and it would have had the GPS trackings and everything of where he went to. So, of course, it wasn't him that did it. And I understand that you want to put it on him, but you just can't do that. And it's understandable that, you know, people can be under stress and doing all this stuff and want to take themselves out. Because I was in Carrie's same position um the, the, the past year. Okay, and he, she was like, what? He said, yeah, you know, I was working on the St. Patrick's case trying to get uh, Tariq daddy or whatever. And, um, you know, I was planning evidence. It came to the point where I was planning evidence because just about everybody that came around him and that came across his path was just passing away, just getting killed, getting killed, getting killed. And it was just getting me pissed off. So I was planting evidence. And then, you know, I got found out. And then it was just like, fuck it. I need to just take myself out. But unfortunately, well, fortunately, I didn't. You know what I'm saying? She was like, oh. Oh, wow, you know, hmm, at this point, she was like, you know, but she still want to get to read. And he telling her, you know, you just need to not retry this again because it's going to damage her reputation, especially if you lose again. And he, she was like, see, this is the reason why me and you cannot be in a relationship. It's just not going to work like that because look at what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she has integrity. I will say that. Um... You know, and even Sax was just confused and kind of shocked at himself for standing up for Tariq. But she was like, no, I'm going to do what I got to do. Meanwhile, Tariq, when he was at David's office, what made him leave was because he got a text from Monet telling him uh, that she needed his help. So he meet her at the church or whatever. She was like, what's up? You know, and he was like, I know you ain't calling me down here because you're glad that the case is done or whatever, but what's good? Basically, she telling him, you know, Monet is just... It's like when you think one thing is about to happen, just know that it's not going to be what it is, okay? Because Monet was sitting there and she was just so gun ho like, yeah, we're going to get Kane to do this whole thing. We're going to get Kane to take out the daddy. He talking to uh Kane, telling Kane, we're going to get uh, we gonna get you to take your daddy out. Meanwhile, she telling the whole shit to uh Zeke, uh, not Zeke, but uh, Tariq and was like, listen, uh, Dante asked, aka Mecca, he was like, yeah, Dante, you know, I found all this bag or whatever, and the only reason why he ain't take me out is because, you know, he need the bag back. The bag got information on him, and you know, he was an informant. That motherfucker was a snitch. <laughs> She was pissed, okay? She was already pissed because she said, listen, we got to take him out, okay? I need to take him out, all right? He had it in his mind that Kane going to take Lorenzo out, but I need you to get in on the plan, and I need you to set it up so that Kane can know to take his daddy out. But before we get to the part where he could take the daddy out, put me in a position so I could take Dante ass out. I said, well, you finna take your other baby daddy out? Girl, that's your first love. You said, fuck that nigga. I'm with Lorenzo all day, every day, baby, the L.O. Okay? I said, all right. You know, I don't know who to cheer for. To be honest, I would have liked him to be with Dante because Dante said, listen, baby, I've been planning this whole thing ever since I lost you. I said, you know what? Dante, you a little cray-cray because I feel as though you probably would do something to Monet if she chose something different. You know, even if y'all got together and she did something different against you or whatever. So, Hmm, maybe it is a good thing that you get the fuck up out of here because you've been playing this and you've been just mischievous and everything. The relationship and all of this has started off on a lie and, and, and you coming after her kids and you're trying to test Kane and all this stuff. She's just not hit for it, okay? So at this point, she, after she get through with Tariq, because Tariq said, cool, you know, he telling her I'm about to be out the game after all of this stuff. I said, yeah, right, okay? Because it did get renewed for a season three. We'll see, you know. Go said the same thing and look what happened to him, okay? You know, meanwhile, 
uh, uh, Monego meet up with Lorenzo at the bar. He was giving some money to one of his dudes, right? And then we got this other dude that was just sitting there, you know, when he um when um he was up in there talking to Monet. Monet popped up in there. And it was the way that the men was looking at her. She was like, oh, so you really just going to um be out here telling our marital problems to everybody to the streets? And I guess he did because old boy that was sitting at the bar, when he gave him the bag and he got up, he looked at Monet like, bitch, ho ass. You know what I'm saying? That's how he gave her that look. But then the other one that was sitting in the back, he was just looking like mischievous and just devious and everything. I just didn't trust him. I was like, why are you looking like that? Who is you? Girl, come to find out, that's Mecha Man. And I said, oh, so that's why you looking like that. Okay, cool. You trying to see what's good. You know what I'm saying? Um, Meanwhile, she telling Lorenzo, listen, Lorenzo, regardless of what's going on, let me just tell you this. Come to find out, Mecca is motherfucking Dante. He been setting this shit up from the whole jump. And he want Kane to take your ass out. And I need to take his ass out. No, I need to take that nigga out. I said, hold the fuck up, Lorenzo. Now, I know you got black kids and you play around in black puss, but baby, don't say that word around me and don't give me that well you know that's how they be up in new york y'all already know i always have a problem with non-black people you know what i'm saying who don't claim blackness saying shit like that you know what i'm saying so leave that out my comments but anyway you know he was i was like wait a minute oh lorenzo he said no so this man been setting this whole thing up this whole time she was like yeah but i'm gonna have to take him out no what is about you trying to take him out i want to take him out i said lorenzo let let monet do this okay because it's personal it's personal. Mm-hmm. She got more she got more fight up in this shit than you do. She got more to lose. I want you to go over there and convince the kids Drew and Diana was good. So he had to go over there and he talking to Drew and Diana about it. It's Diana for me, okay? Diana with your 28 year old looking ass okay now mama i wish monet would have strangled your ass at that dinner table because you got a little bit too much mouth yes monet was doing a lot by keeping the secret or whatever but at the same time you acting like monet didn't keep you fed you acting like monet didn't keep a roof over your goddamn head monet didn't put some money up in your pocket give you the money to get the dress and all the stuff that you be doing okay you know what i'm saying she let you fucking breathe and you up here turning your back on her yeah she ain't the best mama but she don't need to be having all this fever Okay, the only bitch that should really be pissed off at her is Zeke. Yeah, okay, so what? So what? Zeke the one that's supposed to have the most feelings about this shit. Because she just found out that his whole life is a lie. Okay, and you up here, um, we got to do this for Monet. Fuck Monet. Monet this and we trust Monet like what da 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 How you know that this going to happen? I said you got a little bit too much lip, bitch. Somebody needs to pop you in that shit, okay? Meanwhile, Drew was like, well, if, if Monet wanted to take daddy out, she would have been took him out. And so, you know, he was like, we got to do this for the fam. Okay, we got to do this for the family, all right? Cool. So that's what they going to do, you know, and Tariq going to help and all this stuff. So at this point, you know, uh, speaking of Tariq, he go back up into the dorm room, Brayden packing up and leaving. His daddy then pulls him out to school or whatever. And, of course, you know, Tariq is telling him he about to be out the game. Brayden kind of in his feelings about it. You know, he was like course correct you know did somebody take the drugs did you go up in there and take the drugs from the stuff upstairs and he was like no but then he said you know course correct is like blowing up even though we ain't got no product right now it's blowing up he was like what you mean we ain't got no product somebody used my um code to go up in there and he was like yeah obviously a couple of times and then he looked at his thing and he just was like motherfucking diane diane the one that did that okay cool cool okay well fuck that shit we don't care about that but at the same time um, he did ask about Lauren, you know, and Brayden said, you know, she just took the car and she left. You know what I'm saying? I told her don't talk to nobody, but hey, it is what it is. You know, she got to lay low. Meanwhile, Kane come up in there. Y'all niggas don't close the door. Y'all don't lock the doors around here. I said, exactly. You just got off of this shit and you ain't going to lock the door. Come on now. And y'all talking about drug business and everything. Meanwhile, you know, Brayden leaves out. Mind you, Kane called Brayden Casper. I said, now, Kane, that wasn't nice. Okay, Brayden did y'all a solid that he didn't have to do. And you're going to call that boy as Casper. But anyway, he gets to talking to Tariq. Okay, Tariq gets the phone that uh, uh, he had, I guess, that was, you know, for Mecca or whatever. And, you know, he forwarded the calls to him. 
to a number that's supposed to go to him or whatever, so it won't go to the Mac or some shit like that, whatever, so it won't be tracking him. And he was basically telling him what he going to need to do to uh, get this plan done. And he was like, you got to be ready for this whole thing. Because, you know, Kane acted like, you know, I could do this. It ain't nothing, you know, it's just my daddy. I don't give a fuck, okay? And he was like, yeah, I had to take my daddy out cause to save my family. You know what I'm saying? And at that point in time, I didn't want to do it, but I really had to do it. You know, to save my family and, and to get us right here. You know, and what you got to be prepared for is that once you do some shit like this, it's going to change the rest of your life. Okay? It's going to change the rest of how you feel. I said, oh, shit. So, it was like a real heart-to-heart -heart moment. It was a street thug heart-to-heart -heart moment about how you got to, you know, you got to prepare for this shit. Okay? Meanwhile, Kane acting all big and bad, but he took that shit in because when he turned around, he was just like, oh, shit. And I said, yeah. Yeah, you ain't prepared for all of that. Okay, meanwhile, I'm going to need them to put Zeke on a baby leash. You know them leashes that them white people be having? I ain't even going to say white people because my mama had one for us too. Okay, I ain't even going to lie. Them little leashes, that little book bag that look like a little leash or whatever that they had on the little kids. Pull your little ass back here, okay? They can go so far and just pull their ass back. Put one of them motherfuckers on goddamn um, Zeke. Because Zeke ass went down to the goddamn police station. Now, I thought we was done with Detective uh, Whit uh, Whitmore, okay? I thought we was done with him. This nigga goes to him and gonna say, Hey, uh, you up there on, 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 on Carrie Case? I, I, I just, I, I just wanna know, did you, did you really think that this is suicide? You really think that she committed suicide? He was like, I mean, yeah, you the one that saw him or whatever, and the medical examiner said that it did or whatever. You got any information that you wanna uh, offer? I mean, the door's all open. He was like, uh, 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 no, I just, I, I just want to confirm. I said, get your ass out of here, because now his interest is peaked, okay? Why are you coming up in here for what? Okay, now you got his interest peaked and everything, and I said, oh, go sit your ass down somewhere. Meanwhile, we get, um, you know, the DNC head talking to Sweeney about this whole blackface picture, okay? And he basically saying, oh, it ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? This happened up in college. You can't use this to take me down and all that stuff or whatever, okay? I survived, me too, and we ain't doing this Black Lives Matter type of shit. I said, excuse the fuck out of me. It's the way that he said the, the Black Lives Matter in the way that he said the um me too as if that ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not for the cause. I said, are you Okay, I know who you swing for. Bitch, Tate came over there and was like, yeah, you gonna step your ass down, whatever. And then people gonna know that. He was like, so I can do this for this. And he said, this nigga? That's what you want to say? This nigga? Huh? <laughs> I said, what the fuck? Because I could have sworn Sweeney was about to say it. And I peeked up like, wait a minute. Hold up. <laughs> You know, so he was like, in order to avoid a headline, what you need to do is you need to step down, go ahead and put me up in your seat, and then give it a couple of years, and then you try to run for Congress, and then you got this new Congress, or you try to run for Senate, and you got this new Congressman that's going to back you, and you probably get the head of HUD or some shit like that. Now, at first, he wasn't here for it, but eventually, he had to go ahead and do it. You know what I'm saying? He had to fall to it. I said, take, take, take. You conniving motherfucker, but you did what you had to do to get what you needed, Okay. And he got his little seat. I said, uh, uh, uh. You have to throw a few people, including your brother, under the damn bus to get all of this shit. They don't make no damn sense. So now we got Mecca, a.k.a. Dante, being pissed off about what happened with the GTG saying it was Lorenzo and uh, Tariq who set it up. And they got to get to uh, uh, Lorenzo and all this stuff. Tariq got his bag. He trying to get the bag back and all this. And, you know, Kane is like, why do I? He said, what they got to do with me? Okay. And, and who is you to tell me what to do right about now? He said, listen, I'm an international drug person. Okay. I bring drugs in and do all this stuff or whatever. That's what I do. We can rebuild trust and all that shit. Okay. So, you know, <clears throat> they up here talking about strategy or whatever. Monet comes in there and she was like, what the hell y'all talking about? Did you talk to Zeke? And he was like, well, you know, yeah, he was thinking about not coming. She was like, he ain't coming, okay? He ain't coming. Drew and Diana ain't coming. So, at this point, I feel as though, you know, Zeke just needs some time, okay? He needs some space by himself, you know? And so, at this point, you know, he just... He, he looked at the tracker and he calls Tariq and, you know, he was like, yo, Tariq, I got what you asked for, okay? And he was like, all right, cool, whatever. Meanwhile, um, Monet literally just lied to that man, okay? It's all a fucking game at this point. Tariq is on campus and, of course, he's meeting up with his conservator. Uh, conservator. 
And he basically tell them that, you know, they was able to get the stop to Yasmin's uh, adoption, okay, and put the adoption, or I should say, the custody back to him. And he was like, cool. But at this point, I'm sitting here like, Tariq, let little Yasmin be adopted. And I understand that, you know, you want to still have a, 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 a part in her life or whatever. But regardless of you saying that you're going to be in the game or not, that game going to always be there. You're going to always have enemies coming after you, okay? It just don't go away like that. And therefore, you're going to still be putting the little girl in danger. So let her stay where she at, you know? And so at this moment... He, uh, the conservative was like, you know, and we got somebody else that needs to talk to you right quick. It's Sax. He like, what the fuck you doing up here? Sax had to tell him, listen, I know you don't want to see me, but let me just tell you this. Um, you know, Lauren, she's dead. Uh, they found the car, they found the body and all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Do you know anybody that probably could have did this or whatever? Because he was like, how the hell would I do it? I didn't know nothing about it and everything. Meanwhile, he go over there and he talking to Effie. Effie like, you know, don't feel bad, don't feel bad. Cause he was like, every time I do something and somebody get by me, you know what I'm saying? They died. This is my fault. Cause had she never met me, she wouldn't be dead and all this stuff. And woo woo woo. Neither would carry la 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 la. Effie had her goddamn nurse trying to soothe him and trying to talk him down and be like, Babe, it's cool, you know what I'm saying? You such a good person. It ain't your fault. You know what I'm saying? She knew what she was getting to, but she didn't. She didn't. I said, bitch, you the one that did it. How dare you? Okay? And I'm just sitting here like, boy, you know, he was like, man, should I really just be talking to you? Uh, try to get gas at this point? Because all this stuff. I said, just let it go at this point. Meanwhile, Sax had went over to tell Davis, listen, uh, we got blood on our hands, okay? Because Lauren is dead. And not only is Lauren is dead, Carrie also did too and it's just so convenient that she so-called can't commit suicide or whatever because sex putting two and two together davis was like we're not gonna put that on my hands okay we're not about to do this or whatever especially with the carry situation he was like but you knew her you put the, you did what you did to what you did on the stand and all that stuff and you know at this point because um sex was just like she not the type to do that like it just doesn't make sense at this why would she do this and everything and um he was just like, so you want to come to me and you want to make me feel bad and put all this on me, but yet you acting like you ain't do stuff in your past, okay? You the one that came through and, and, and wrongly convicted, uh, 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 what's his name? Ghost for murder, okay? You, you falsified evidence to get him convicted for murder. So what are you talking about? So don't come in here on your high horse, all right? And now that we done talking about that, what about this Jeffrey Rollins case, okay? He was like, well, I mean, I guess, you know, he, he really innocent, okay? The person that actually did it is four inches taller than him, and, you know, he should have been out. And he was like, well, why you ain't working on the case? And that's my main priority. That's the main thing that we need to be working on. And I'm so glad that they brought that up because I I was like, what was the point of meeting his brother? Because that's who he's talking about. He's trying to get his brother out of jail, okay? And and, and we're not going to say anything. Like, how was that? We're going to continue that up in season three? I said, oh, okay. Finally, they came back to that because I thought they was just going to leave that open-ended for the with this finale. Like, we ain't going to mention nothing about it, but they did. Meanwhile, you know, um, all of a sudden, we get this curly hair awful wig person and i said bitch look at motherfucking tasha or i should say vanessa okay she's sitting at the table on her little book uh macbook or whatever looking at her picture of her kids and everything next thing you know she hears somebody cut pulling up in the driveway and uh she was like oh my god oh my god what's this so she get on the phone and she texting the marshal like somebody is pulling up in the driveway is this y'all and the marshal was like no get your stuff and, and and hide and get out of there and so somebody knocked on the door and it was tamika okay it was tamika and she was dropping off yasmin or i should say olivia you know from fort Wayne, indiana okay she has no siblings she want a, a dog or some shit or whatever and basically this is all arranged okay so instead of Tariq being able to take care of Yasmin, they arranged it so that Olivia, or I could say now Olivia, she can be with Vanessa, a.k.a. Tasha, okay? And they're about to move again, you know? 
And she said, I don't know any, this is Tamika. I don't know nothing about Tariq. Cause she, um, you know, Tasha was asking, is he okay? Is he okay? I need to know how he's doing or whatever. Don't count my son out. Tamika said, I never do. Okay. And he showed me, he, he, he gonna always come through. And so it was like, whatever this Tariq person is, you need to forget about them. Okay. You need to forget about them and you need to move on with your life. And it's the one and only time that I'm gonna ever be able to do this. And she just needed to know if he was okay. And she looked over there to the car, and at first she had this worried look like, is he okay, is he okay? But then when she looked at the car, she kind of had this little slight smirk on her face like, yeah, she's reassured that he's okay. Why? Because he was in the car. And at one point, he was going to get out. But, you know, Sax had to tell him, no, just just, just, just stay in the car, okay? And and, and let, this, let this be cool. Meanwhile, he brings up this whole person, Dante Spears. And he was like, yeah, I know Dante. Okay. Dante took down Lobos. He took down Jimenez and all this stuff. He had a guy to... Girl, he, he, he just an informer out of all the asses, okay? He got so bad and people was coming after him so bad that bitch, he wasn't even supposed to be back up in the States. I said, what? He said, truth be told, if it wasn't for Dante doing what he did to Lobos and Jimenez and giving um the Eastern District all this goddamn work, your daddy probably would still be here and we wouldn't even been after him. <laughs> Angela would have been here too. I said, well, fuck Angie, okay? I'm sorry. I just lost the love of my life, Tasha. I'm grieving. <laughs> like, what? I would never forget when he told his wife that. I said, wait. The ghost was on some shit. Like, he just became extra reckless. But anyway, moving on from that, we get... um. Drew meeting up with uh 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 Tariq and basically they got two duffel bags, okay? And they're gonna do a bait and switch type of situation. They're about to make it seem as though because they already know that or at least Tariq knows, Dante is gonna be following him because he really wants this bag. And as long as Tariq got this bag, you know, Tariq still got the upper hand. So Dante wants to get that bag from him before he could do anything else. And so of course Dante is gonna have his people you know, following him. So therefore, we're gonna have the bag go to Diana, the real bag, put it up in the um get it from up there on the uh roof. And it was like, Y'all know how to get up in there just like y'all stole my job. Drew like, oh uh see about that, my bag. He was like, It's okay, fuck all that shit. But we're gonna get the other bag, the fake bag, the decoy bag to uh Lorenzo and we're gonna make it seem like, you know, stretches sources thin. So a bag gonna be going here, bag gonna be going there and all that shit. So as soon as this happened, Drew go gives a bag to um diana and lorenzo and of course it's a guy out there watching and and, and and telling every moves about where lorenzo going with the bag whatever and something feel fishy or whatever okay cool and drew made it a point to tell diana do not look in the bag when you go get it okay do not look at it because like um uh, what's his name? Tariq said, plausible deniability because we don't want her to be prone to whatever might happen if she sees what's in that bag, okay? All of that information and everything. And I'm sitting here like, damn, Diana might just look up in the bag because she's just a hard-headed ass bitch at this point. And so Drew trying to do what he got to do and he get a text from Everett talking about some, we need to talk, we got to meet up, it's an emergency. I said, Everett, this ain't the time, boy. This is not the time, okay? Figure it out yourself. <sighs> Baby, they didn't got Zeke up in the uh, police station showing him freaking, you know, surveillance camera screenshot of Monet up in the car coming from Carrie House at the right time that she allegedly committed suicide or whatever. And he was like, because uh, Detective Whitmore was like, was that what you wanted to come and tell me? He said, uh, uh, you know, uh, Monet was coming to pick me up because I was just food blocks away. And I was like, yeah, so you was going to go to Carrie's? Yeah, but uh, I decided not to go. And I said to go over there to Carrie's. And that's when I saw her. I said, oh, my God, please get out of there. And he was like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. That's what we're going to do, huh? So he in his feelings now that he realized that his mama really did have something to do with what happened to Carrie. He get his tall ass in that little ass car. Baby, that should be bothering me when I see tall people getting little ass cars because I know it'd be a struggle sometimes for me to get my ass out because of my knees and shit. And I'm like, y'all tall, six foot something up in that little ass, four foot something car. Anyway, so he just had a little breakdown in the car. Meanwhile, you got Kane and Tariq. They at the drop off spot, you know, waiting for Lorenzo where Kane's supposed to be taking out Lorenzo allegedly. And um, at this point, you know, um... <clears throat> Anyway, 
Kane was asking Tariq what the hell he know about uh, 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 Mecca or whatever, Dante. I don't know. I ain't looking at bad. He was like, nigga, you lying because you wouldn't be doing all this stuff if you wouldn't. He was like, why are you worried about me? Okay. So they get out the car. They go see everybody coming up in there. We got uh, an exchange happening with the bags and everything, you know, between Lorenzo and Mecca's guys or whatever. Um, the main dude that was at the bar that Mecca gave that, uh, well, Lorenzo gave the, the bag to earlier. The black guy, he told the other dude to go look in that bag, get the bag. So they look up in the bag, and, um, you know, you got Kane and uh, uh, Tariq over there, and Kane was about to get ready to take his daddy out. And then Tariq had to stop him. He was like, cool, 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 because they know that you're here or whatever. And this is all a setup. It was just a setup. You know, you're not going to really uh, kill uh, Lorenzo because Monet finna take out Dante, and we here to take out Dante people, okay? That's what we're here for. Next thing you know, Old boy looked up in the bag and was like, ain't nothing here. And then they just started shooting. Pop, 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 pop. Everybody just started going down, started going down, okay? So, of course, you know, our people got it, right? You know, our people really got it. You know what I'm saying? That we was cheering for. It is so crazy how when Ghost Power 1, uh, Power Book Season 1, we was not here for uh, Tariq, especially at the end of season, uh, the last season of, of Power, period. Now we rooting for the nigga to go past, okay, to keep on going, you know. And so at this point, um, after they do all this shoot or whatever, uh, uh, Lorenzo get old oh boy phone, the last dude, his phone, and he see that the BSK, you know, that little game that was supposed to be, uh, you know, Keno little game or whatever, Backstreet Killers or whatever the fuck, they... It's in on it, too. They team Mecca and all this stuff. And it's in the phone. And he was like, text me when you done. And so uh, Mecca was looking at the phone, and he wasn't getting no text. But then he got this, uh, he typed in his number, and he was like, I'm going to need some help. I think my cover been blown or some shit like that. I said, yo, informant ass, you still working undercover and shit? Did you hear the way his voice changed? It went from being hardcore thug, like nigga, you know what I'm saying, to... Oh my God, I think my cover has changed. I said, oh, you cleared that shit up real good. I said, what's going on, Mecca? What are we doing? Meanwhile, you know, um, <clears throat> Monet is there. She making sure that she got the gun in the bag. And, um, you know, he was like, they should be done already. Have you heard from Kane? She was like, he probably chopping up the body or whatever. So just, just chill, calm down. Meanwhile, um, you got... Drew going over there to meet up with Everett. Everett said the emergency was him getting a new pass, and they saying that with his old pass, he was accessing accessing the roof, okay, a place that he didn't even know that uh, existed, and he wasn't even supposed to be uh, um, having access to it. And he was like, is that fucking what it is? Boy, if you don't get the hell up out of here, he was like, listen, the problem is that I can't trust you. We're supposed to be telling you. I said, Everett, this ain't the time. This is not the time. You don't even understand what's going on. You got my man stressed out over some bullshit, okay? We'll talk about this shit later. I'll give you some dick later, okay? And calm your ass down. That's what I wanted Drew to say, you know? He was like, listen, I'm late for my basketball practice. And Drew said, listen, you know, have a good game, okay? Meanwhile, one of them BSK, two of them BSKs that was uh following him get out. And, of course, they tried to fight uh, Drew, okay? Drew realized that he worked, they working with Mecca. They take the bag, realized there ain't nothing in the bag. And Kane had to go get him because he was like, yeah, I know where he at. And Kane came up just in time because they was about to take him out. They was about to take Drew out. But, see, Drew been proving to us that he ain't no bitch, okay? When I tell you that motherfucker was fighting for his goddamn life and he was ready to put a cap up in that motherfucker, and it was Kane that had to stop him. He was like, no, we can't do that. I said, of course not. Not on the university the ground okay girl it's too much going on too much heat just happening or whatever and so they um he was like we're gonna take him and we're gonna um you know give him to uh, uh lorenzo and let him do what he need to do with it with him meanwhile lorenzo go to the house he see Diana asking what's going on with Monet. She ain't got no real answer because she really don't give a damn. Meanwhile, he asked what was in the bag. She was like, why would you ask me that? So you really think that your daughter is a motherfucking snitch? He said no. Because she was like, everybody always thinking I'm the untrustworthy one. I said, bitch, you looked up in the bag. And he said the same thing. I know no kid of mine is a snitch. But at the same time, I know my daughter. You're always smart and you always steps ahead to get us out of shit. So, what was in the bag? Well, what was in the bag was I only saw a few pictures, okay? I saw a few papers. And then I seen some uh, passports, whatever they had. Me, uh, Kane, and Monet, and Zeke pictures on there and Drew. You know what I'm saying? And, of course, Lorenzo was in his feelings after that, okay? Lorenzo was in his feelings after that because he realized that this nigga really was finna try to take me out. My passport ain't up in there. This one finna be no family affair up in this bitch. Okay, I said, oh, shit. So now he pissed. 
So at this point, you know, he's out to go get Dante. Meanwhile, Tariq finna go up there and give him the um, bag, right? And so at this point, when he was about to come up there, um, the front desk was about to let him up. Monet said, uh, turn around, you know, told him what's up. I already know that you know it is what it is, nigga. I'm finna take your ass out. You fucking up my life or whatever. And that's what it is. He was like, nay, nay. I already know that you did this and whatever, but I would do whatever it is that I got to do to keep you. And I want him to stop saying nay, nays. Because it just, it just, it, it sounds like a non-black person trying to say, trying to use A-A-V-E. I'm just saying it because it, it just... <laughs> It don't flow right when he say it. It don't flow right when he say it. Because every time I hear Nene, I think about that episode of Living Single when uh, Naughty by Nature came on there and old boy was like, hey, Nene. See, that's how it sound, okay? It sound better like that. But um, anyway, so at this point, you know, um, she was like, I know you're supposed to take Tariq out and all the stuff. You find this shit out. Next thing you know, pop. I said, oh, shit. Girl, Tariq came up in there and was like, what the fuck happened? It was like, well, it was either him or me, but bitch, it was him because that motherfucker knew about you and he was going to take you out as soon as you came up in here. So I had to take him out because he was going to take me out after. Okay, I said, in his own home? In his own home? Nigga, you should have stayed out of the state. Okay, that's what you should have did. Meanwhile, Dante done went, I mean, uh, Lorenzo done went to the damn hangar, Dante hangar, okay? And at this point, here comes freaking uh 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 zeke he pull up in the car lorenzo is hiding and he think that is dante and i said now come the fuck on okay now courtney this is where you got me fucked up at okay how the fuck do you get he saw mecca dante is taller than mecca i mean um uh, zeke is taller than mecca slimmer than mecca even with a jacket on, he's slimmer with Me the Mecca. So how the hell did you gonna convince us that he literally thought that that tall, dangly dude is walking around who has a bald head with a fucking hoodie on and you ain't never seen him with no shit like that? How did you get them too confused? He come walking to the goddamn um jet, so he was finna leave or whatever, or he was going to talk to Dante or whatever, and he shoots him in the back. I said, what the fuck? It's always the... We done talk so much shit about Zeke, but see, they ain't even had to do... Courtney, you fucked up for that, and that was a... That's a flaw right there, bitch. Okay, now how the fuck you gonna do that shit and pass that off and make him go down like that? That's fucked up, Courtney, and you need your ass whooped for that because Zeke, he been the most... He dumped as a doorknob, but he the most innocent one. And then you going to take him out and his daddy. What the fuck is wrong with you now? The daddy? Okay, fine. But Zeke. That's fucked up. That's really fucked up. Monet. Oh, okay. I am hurt. I am hurt, okay? Because that should have never happened. I just don't understand. I don't get it. Monet come up in the house. She trying to figure out what's everything going on. You know, she where everybody at? Kane come up in there. She was like, where your daddy at? You know, he come up around the corner like he just did, did something but trying to act innocent. And I'm sitting here like, okay, what's going on? Next thing you know, Diana was like, hey, everybody, my, look what's going on on the TV. Bitch, it's already on the TV saying that Dante didn't get shot up in his penthouse apartment. Meanwhile, um, Lorenzo's sitting there like this. And I said, yeah, motherfucker, you got the wrong nigga. I said, what the fuck is going on? Monet told you that she had it taken care of. And you ain't had to do what you did, bitch. You gun ho, bitch. Okay? Meanwhile, guess who the fuck is the detective that he texted? Or I should say he called or whatever that he was using as the, his, his fucking person that he was supposed to check in with. Detective Ramirez. And what's his, what's her name? Rodriguez. I said, oh shit, bitch. Tight motherfucking mouth Ramirez uh Rodriguez is back. I said, bitch, I don't even feel like doing her goddamn voice right now. I'm too fucking through. She said you called me too late. Damn, Dante. Meanwhile, they trying to figure out who was up in there. Oh, it didn't look like nobody came up in there that um wasn't supposed to be here, but we did get this steal. And what is the steal that they got? A picture of goddamn Tariq down there at the goddamn concierge desk. I said, what the fuck? Now he back up in this shit with this bitch. I said, girl, 
girl, she's finna give me a time. So that means this bitch is about to be up in season damn three. I'm sorry. I'm just pissed off. Not at her. Because Miss Lady just doing her job. But at this whole situation, because I am still stuck on how the fuck he got the body types. Miss. Anyway, Davis is in the jail telling his brother, you know, uh, uh, the white boy is on the case talking about sex. And he was like, at least you got somebody that's four inches taller. Which he was talking about himself. Because basically his brother is in jail for a crime that his brother, uh, that Davis committed. Okay? That's what's going on with that situation. Meanwhile, sex is booed up with Sullivan. So I guess they're a couple now. And he like, listen, if we go on after, uh, I think, uh, Davis is in the pockets of the Tejadas and, 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 uh, 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 Tariq and all that shit, bitch. And if you want to go after them, I'll go after them with you. Okay? I don't care about my uh uh, uh my license or whatever. It, it's about my life because they're going to come after me too. So I just might as well go ahead and get it with you. I said, oh, so now we got to change your heart now that you got a little kitty on the side that you really want. Meanwhile, Rashad up there talking to his brother. His brother is pissed off and he basically said, when I get this seat, I want you to be the head of my security. The brother said, fuck you. Okay. Because, you know, Rashad just too damn good cocky for his own good meanwhile you got um Tariq and Effie Effie finna go back to Connecticut okay and he like you could come out here to Stansfield cause they got a robotics class out here I said girl you should be ashamed of your goddamn self but you playing your role well I can't even I can't even be mad at the bitch cause it's the street life you know what I'm saying she foul as fuck but that's how it is Tariq you're dumb as fuck now all of a sudden that's your girl that's your girl when you was just caking it up with Diana and then before that you was just caking it up with Lauren and this is days in between not weeks not months not le years days in between Bitch, this motherfucker. Meanwhile, we get to, uh, Vanessa, a.k.a. Tasha. Miss Olivia, a.k.a. Yasmin, gets her a note from, um, you know, uh, Tariq. And uh, I said, Yasmin, she done came a long way since we seen her on Power. Baby girl done grew inches. She almost as tall as Tasha. I said, all right. Basically, Tariq said, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to get to you. But what that means is I got to keep on uh, uh, selling these drugs, getting some money, get some power, whatever, so I can do what I got to do. I said, okay, cool. Then here comes the most heartbreaking part of the whole episode besides Zeke getting shot in his back. Because at that point, we don't know if he alive or not. But they wait till the end of the episode. And you got, because Monet had asked earlier, where well, Zeke, ain't nobody heard from Zeke, so we just gonna sit down and we just gonna eat without him. You know, because it's like, Zeke is already pissed off at us, so, you know, it's understandable at this point that he don't want to be around family, he don't want to be around me. And so she's just looking at the empty place, and I said, oh my God, so what are y'all trying to tell us? What are y'all trying to and then Lorenzo just sitting there looking so guilty. I said, boy, just spit the shit out. Because you know Mo Monet going to kill you in your sleep, okay? Bitch, all of a sudden the phone rang. And not just any phone, the house phone. I said, bitch, in 2021, who got a house phone? Who got a house phone? That was weird, but okay. And she went to go get the phone. Everybody else just eating. I said, oh, so this is just normal. Y'all don't give a shit. Okay, fine. She get on the phone. Detective Whitmore on there. And she was, he was like... Uh, is this Monet Tejada, the guardian of Ezekiel Cross? Yes, this is her mother. I mean, his mother. I was like, oh. It took him aback for a second. Like, oh, mother? Okay, well, you know, Ezekiel, mm, I'm sorry to inform you, ma'am, but your son was found dead. <laughs> Ain't no hole in my blood. I said, Monet, go kill him. The knife is right there. The knife is right there. No explanation. Just go take every last one of the motherfuckers out. Bitch, season three, Monet better be going on a goddamn rampage and she better kill that motherfucker dead. Okay? Oh, my God. <sighs> R.I.P. to Zeke. You know, I regret making fun of your little dumb ass. Oh, can't even say that. Y'all, that was power. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about ghosts. I'm going to go look at Force. I'll probably get that to y'all later on today. But I'll see y'all later. I need to recover because, Courtney, you need your ass beat. You, 50, and everybody else. Y'all